right, I think we're going to begin this evening's service. Are you all ready? Great. Just make sure I have all the things I need. All right. The first thing I wanted to say, besides welcome everybody, and thank you for coming to Monday Thursday, is that um, you may be wondering what Monday Thursday means. And in case you have never heard about the definition or the tradition of Monday Thursday, it comes, uh, the word Monday in particular, comes from the Latin mandatum. And it's a verb that means to give or to order or to command. And we call Monday Thursday after that verb because after the Last Supper and as they were walking to Gethsemane, Jesus taught his followers a new commandment, which is written in John 13, 34. And it goes like this. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. So that's why it's called Monday Thursday, because there was a mandate or a command in that evening that they shared together. And tonight we're going to do two things. We're going to do hand washing in the same uh, spirit that people have often done foot washing together. And we're doing that, of course, one, because um, it's easier to wash our hands together on the camera, and two, because of coronavirus, right? We have been spending so much time washing our hands either with Purell or with soap and water, and this is just to put it in the context of what is sacred and to acknowledge that the experience that we've been having and this way of keeping each other safe is a sacred trust that we share together. And so though we are not washing each other's feet tonight, simply by the act of washing our hands, we are keeping each other safe and honoring this commandment to love each other, um, to love one another. And so first I'm going to read from John 13 and share with you the story of the foot washing as it is told in the Gospel of John. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he'd come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. So ends the reading. And so I believe all of us who are participating this evening have our bowl of water and our soap. And so what I'm going to encourage you to do is to, you know, get your um, hands soapy. Dip them in the water, get them soapy, and then for the duration of the song that we're going to hear, which is Will You Let Me Be Your Servant, performed by Father Cyprian Consiglio and Brother James Mackel, we're going to wash our hands. And we're just going to do that together for the length of the song. Probably longer than they say to do at the CDC, but good for us. Let me be your servant, let me be a 
Jesus Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk a mile and light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to to take your towel and dry off your hands. And this is a reminder that when we wash each other's feet or hands or when we take care of each other by our social distancing or the acts of purification and cleanliness that we perform right now, we are indeed doing so in part because of that commandment that Christ gave to his followers on the walk to Gethsemane, to love each other. And now, let's be in prayer. Oh, holy God, we walk with you towards death. And you walk ahead of us, and you walk with us, and you fill us with your breath, a breath which is sacred and holy and healthy. We ask that you will accompany us through the next three days as we approach your crucifixion, your going away, and your resurrection and your return to us and the promise that you will always be with us. Help us to understand that the journey that you first took is our journey too, and that you are with us even now in the journey that our communities are taking through these times. Help us to find comfort and resilience and peace in your presence. Amen. And now I'm going to read from Psalm 22, just a few excerpts, but you may recognize in Psalm 22 some of the words which are then considered to be the last statements that Christ made while he was on the cross. It's very likely that he was calling out and pulling on those Hebrew scriptures that were his texts when he was dying, and some of them come from Psalm 22. The song that you'll hear underneath the reading is played by Austin Roberts 
on his piano. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. So ends the reading. So tonight we are going to do our best to strip the altar, which is a tradition that happens on Monday, Thursday in preparation for the hours of Holy Friday. Again, we are reflecting on the fact that Christ begins his journey after the Last Supper by going to the garden to pray. He asks that this cup will be taken away from him and his followers whom he has asked to keep vigil with him and to pray and stay awake with him fall asleep again and again. Ultimately, he is betrayed. He is taken up for trial. And tomorrow, during the hours of Holy Friday, we remember that he was crucified and died. And so in preparation for those hours when the earth is changed forever in the time before he returns to us, we're going to strip the altar. We're going to take down the flowers and the palms. We will cover the cross and we will extinguish the candle. At the end of the stripping of the altar, the music by Alan Labrie will continue to play for a few minutes and then the worship will end.